Hey guys, this is Superstar0717. Um, I have in front of you guys uh, version 1 of the uh, Dark Ascension Werewolf deck. Um, so just take note that this deck is uh, is made prior to the pre-release. It's made with uh, basically without extensive testing against the current meta. I have tested it against a couple decks and it does pretty well. Um, but just know that uh, if you guys see this deck tech like two or three months down the line and say that it's horrible, I'll probably agree with you then. Um, so just take note that it is a pre-release uh, deck tech and it's more of a concept right now. Um, so starting off the deck we're running four Wolf Bitten Captive. Uh, Wolf Bitten Captive is amazing compared to Reckless Wave. Um, before when we had Reckless Wave we had to really um, hope that they didn't cast turn one for it to be effective and with every deck in the format having a decent turn one play uh, Reckless Wave went from being more of an amazing card at the top of the format to kind of a real lackluster card that kind of hated to draw um, and it was really our only turn one play in the deck. Uh, so with that being said, with the new uh, 158 cards in the format, we got Wolf Bitten Captive. Uh, Wolf Bitten Captive does a lot better and gets the job done a lot quicker than Wave and more consistently. Um, so with Wolf Bitten Captain, we're doing four of those, and uh, our next card is four Young Wolf. Now, Young Wolf is a really good card. Um, he's a 1-1 one -one with Undying, comes back as a 2-2, two -two, and it's the same thing as, uh, as Wave as a captive, he does the job a little bit better. Uh, if you've got shot him, he'll just come back stronger uh, once, <clears throat> and if you don't, you just have to keep getting poked by 1-1 one -one, uh, until you can deal with the 2-2, two -two, which is usually by turn 2 or 3. Uh, so he'll get in there for a couple shots and then come back as a 2-2, two -two, um, and then by then they'll probably just get rid of him, which uh, makes uh, pretty good for the deck. I mean, you want that fast, consistent hitter to hit them. Turn 1, hit maybe for a 2-2 two -two or a 1-1 one, one -one strike to them. Bring them down 19, and then from there start start going off uh, until they're able to effectively deal with the 2-2 that will eventually come back. Um, so I like Young Wolf a lot. puts a lot of pressure on your opponent early game. Um, and it, like I said, if they can't answer him, they're just going to keep getting poked by 1-1 until they can uh, deal with the 2-2, which might not seem as hard as you think. Um, but if, you, if you're getting in there with it, you might as well just keep going until they have an answer for it. Um, so we're running 8 1-drops, and under the 2-drops, you're running 4 Mayor of Aberbrook. Um, Mayor of Aberbrook is a great card still. Um, he gets even better with this new uh, set of cards because he's not as much of a lightning rod as he used to be. Um, before, you drop Mirror of Everbrook and he would just immediately get countered. Um, but now with Emmerwolf in the deck, your opponent has to know that if they counter this Mirror of Everbrook, then they might not have an answer to Emmerwolf late game. Um, and Emmerwolf is just amazing. Uh, with Moonmist in your hand, Emmerwolf will just wreck your opponent like it's nothing. Um, so like I said, Mirror of Everbrook is a good card. He gets even better with this set because he's not as much of a lightning rod. And uh, he really, with Emmerwolf in the deck, he puts a uh, puts forward like a, a choice for your opponent. They can either get rid of the 3-3 the, the three, three token producer or the 2-2, two, two, um, well I guess it would be a 3-3 three, three and a 4-4, four, four. Um, but ignore that. Um, or they can get rid of the card that's making it so that their wolf won't flip. Now, um... Like I said, four isn't really necessary. Um, he's a lord. He pumps out tokens. Um, and worst case scenario, he'll take a, uh, a removal spell to let some of your other werewolves live and uh, keep doing the job that they do. Sorry about that. I'm feeling sick, so I have to <coughs> cough up and everything. Um, so the next card we're running is uh, two Gat Staff Shepherds. Uh, Gat Staff Shepherds is a good card, in my opinion. Two, two for two is never bad. Um, and the fact that on the flip side, he has Intimidate really is pretty decent. He lets you get in there, um, put in a little bit of pressure on your opponent, and uh, forces them to answer him. And with so many cards in this deck that your opponent needs to answer, um, this is just one of those cards that kind of falls through the crack and just keeps pushing for damage. Um, I've won countless games because of Gatsap, just pushing for two, pushing for three, pushing for four, um, with other cards in the field, and eventually get to the point where they need to answer him, but there's like two or three other cards on the board that they need to answer. Um, I've had a game that I was testing where I had Gatsap Shepherd on the field and Emmerwolf and Ranger, and, uh, of course they took out the Emmerwolf, and then Ranger and Shepherd just couldn't work on the flip side, just fighting everything, and hitting for two, and they just, they just had to scoop because they couldn't really deal effectively with the, the three things that needed to be answered with. <clears throat> Which is why the format has kind of shifted from spot removal to mass removal for things like this, where there's three cards that need to be answered, um, and... Like I said, it is a big, big part of the format that spot removal. 
has stopped kind of, I mean, except for Gushon. The spot removal has kind of taken a backseat to mass removal, and you'll see the changes in the deck uh, on the on the non-creature spell side. Um, so for the next card, we're running three Croons Outlaw. Um, a lot of people have dropped this card because of the double red requirement, but for me, I just dropped the two Kessig Wolf Runs to put in a mountain, put in an extra mountain and an extra forest, just so I can A, hit my turn one Wolf Bin Captive or turn one Young Wolf more consistently, and B, be able to drop Croons Outlaw because I do think she's a crucial part of the deck. Um, I still think that, um, <clears throat> and with that being said, um, I do want to keep her in. I think some people are switching her out, um, uh, I don't exactly remember what they're switching her out for, but they're switching her out for something. Uh, I totally had a brain fart, but they're, they're switching Kroon's out long going for a more green version that just kind of splashes red, um, for the Huntmaster and the Emerwolf, um, but I still think she's a good card, I still, I still think she puts in a lot of work, and, uh, with that being said, I'll, with more testing, I'll be able to get back to you guys how I think the double red fits into the deck um, and how the deck does without uh, a Kessig Wolf run in this format. I think last format, it was more of a commodity. I didn't run it at all because I wanted to more consistently hit the turn one wave drop. But uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to keep it in. Uh, this deck is running on consistency right now. Um, I, I don't want to get too flashy with the deck list. I want to stay with something that's tried and true. Um, <clears throat> and then go from there. But you will see I have dropped Croons down from 4 to 3, uh, just because, once again, you're going to need that double red, and you're not going to be able to hit it consistency, consistently every turn 3. Um, so, on the next card, we're running 4 Emerwolf. Uh, Emerwolf is just an absolute necessity at 4. <coughs> Excuse me. Instrowolf is an absolute necessity at 4. Um, he has 3 awesome effects. Um, each that is needs to be dealt with in its own way. Um, and I think the, the real breaking point of why this card is amazing is just that your wolves won't flip over. So you can cast as many spells as you want. I've had times where I could have alpha strike them, but if for some reason they countered anything, I would have a field full of humans again. But, with that being said, with Emerwolf, you can drop Emerwolf, cast your Moon Mist, cast something else, and then go from there, and not have to worry about flipping over. Um, and it gives you that extra bit of security. Uh, the only thing I don't like is that he's not boosted or affected by Full Moon's Rise. Um, but, I mean, there's you can't really do much for that. I mean, that's just R&D. Um, but I still think he's still an awesome 4 of and a 3 drop. So you have 7 3 drops in the deck. Um, or actually, 9 3 drops, excuse me. Um, the next card we're running is uh, 2 Daybreak Rangers. Uh, same thing with Mare getting a lot better. There's not as many... Uh, cards that your opponent has, or excuse me, there's more cards that we have now that need to be answered. Um, before Daybreak Ranger was so, so, so good compared to the other werewolves that as soon as he hit the field he was immediately countered. Um, and I could never use his effect, I could never do anything with him. Um, but with Emmerwolf and uh, <coughs> Wolf Bitten Captive and things like that, uh, Daybreak Ranger kind of fits real nicely into the deck now. He's not overpowered compared to the other wolves, he's just more fitting the curve, uh, in my opinion, and his effect is very powerful. He's a uh, repeat repeated removal uh, on certain cards, and uh, he's just so much better now that he's not an auto-kill anymore. When you have Daybreak Ranger and uh, Emmerwolf and a Mare on the field, they have to pick which one to spot remove um, if they don't have a mass removal on their hand, and uh, Daybreak Ranger, once again, usually falls through the crack, and uh, it's, just, it's just such a good card. I, I really like Daybreak Ranger. Um, and uh, on the flip side, he gets rid, on the human side at least, he gets rid of spirit tokens pretty pretty well. Uh, and with those, really, really are going to start running rampant with that new uh, Innistrad card. I don't remember what it's called, but it's the one that makes uh, two, two, two flyers, and then you can recast it for like a black, and then it brings back two, two flyers again. Um, I think Daybreak Ranger is going to be a little bit better in this current meta. Um, so for the top of my curve, I'm not running Hot Master of the Fells right now, I'm running Instigator Gang. Uh, Instigator Gang is just a consistent win card for me. Uh, it's put in a lot of work for me, whereas Huntmaster, in my opinion, seems to really just be outclassed by Emmerwolf. Um, eventually, I'll probably run Huntmaster in this spot, um, but for now, in concept, I think that Huntmaster really should have been released in Innistrad because... Um, <coughs> sorry, I'm coughing and everything. Um, with Emmerwolf you don't get the maximum utility out of Huntmaster. 
If Hunt Master was in the last set where you're constantly flipping and flipping and flipping and flipping because you didn't have Emerwolf, then you'd get like plus two two tokens every third turn. You'll burn your opponent for two life every other turn. Like just cards like that, you just get so much advantage out of Hunt Master. But with Emerwolf, you're not flipping as often. And it really it really just is kind of sad. I mean, Hunt Master is a great card, but with Emerwolf, like I said, unless they're going to spot remove Emerwolf on that turn, you're usually going to get off a pretty good, consistent two or three turns of, of wolfage, a of werewolfage, um, that your opponent's going to have to just deal with until they can find a way to remove Emerwolf. Um, and I really just feel that, that card should have been released in Innistrad. Um, but it wasn't, and so we're going to have to live with it. Um, so for now, I'm running four Instigator Gang for Alpha Striking and things like that. Um, <coughs> Sorry, I'm feeling, as you can probably tell, I'm feeling a little sick. Um, but I just, it's just such a good card. And with with uh, Instigator Gang on the field, on the flip, um, you'll have a 5-3, um, or excuse me, a 6-3 Gath Tap Shepherd that's going to consistently poke your opponent for 6 damage if they can't block it. And then, once again, Gath Tap Shepherd becomes one of those cards that needs to be blocked, or that needs, not to be blocked, but that needs to be dealt with. And it leaves your Emmer Wolf and your uh, Daybreak Ranger and your Mare free to continue producing tokens and uh, other things like that. So Instigator Gang, still four of. Um, once, I, once again, uh, I do believe Huntmaster is a good card. I just think it had a better shot of being good last set. Um, but, I mean, there's nothing we can do about that. We're just going to have to work with it. I still think its price is still a little high. Uh, some people think otherwise. They think it's a little low. Um, so you guys just have to take that into into account. I'll probably pick up a playset probably pretty soon. Once it hits $12, I'll probably pick up a playset. Um, but at $18, I just think it's... Mm, no, it's not for me. Um, <clears throat> so on to the non-creature spells, we're running four Moon Mist. Obviously, I don't think this card needs any explanation if you know what the deck does. Uh, and with Emmerwolf, this card just gets that much better. Um, we're going to th four Full Moon's Rise instead of three or two. Um, once again, like I said, with the format shifting more to mass removal than spot removal, you're going to need your four FMRs to really put pressure on your opponent. Uh, I like FMR, running the fourth FMR over Kessig Wolf Run, because with FMR, you get basically the same effect for two instead of three mana. And it's repeatable. It's every turn. You don't have to cast the three mana. And it sacks to regenerate all your werewolves. I just there's just no no comparison between FMR and Kessig Wolf Run, um, and so for that reason I dropped Kessig Wolf Run altogether. Plus it makes Croon's Outlaw more consistent on turn three, um, not Full Moon Rise, but the lack of Kessig Wolf Run, um, <coughs> and so with that we went ahead and dropped that. Um, now we're running two Triumph of the Hordes, and this is something that I'm trying out. It's pretty new. Now, Triumph of the Horde reads, until end of the turn, creatures you control gain plus one one and gain trample and infect. Now, we all know infect fucking sucks, but ten damage is so easy to put out with this deck. Like, it's almost, it's almost unfair how easy ten damage is to put out with this deck. Um, <clears throat> sorry. <coughs> um, with... All the cards that we have, you can tap tap down to bring up Wolfbit and Captive to 6-6. Six, six. You can, you know, have a Gathap Shepherd that's like a 6-3. Uh, it's pretty much unblockable to most decks. Put in 6, in fact. You can have your Emmerwolf that's also unblockable to a bunch of decks. Put in a couple more damage. Instigator Gang will give everybody plus 3. Your Full Moon's Rises will plus them. Your Wolf will be pumped by Mayor of Averbrook. Um... I just think this card is pretty good. When I first started playing the deck, I wanted to play Triumph, but there wasn't enough, like, oomph in the, in the deck to really get over that 10 infect in one turn. <coughs> but with uh, the addition of the fourth Full Moon's Rise, you can really start spamming the field a little bit more consistently, and you can do it without being too scared of a board wipe. Um, Ratchet Bomb still sucks, but FMR does get rid of Ratchet Bomb, so it's not a big deal. Um... But I just I think this card is gonna be so good, and then you can fight something with Ranger and give it four infect counters, whether it's like a Titan or something like that. Um, and that's also a good play. Um, so with that being said, you can just try to Alpha Strike him with this card, and then if you have Moon Mist in your hand, you just won't take any damage from that. And then they'll flip that, or they won't flip, or if you have Emerald, they will flip. They will not flip. Um, but I think Triumph of the Horde is good. 
Um, another card you guys can look into is Overrun and kind of run like a, a Jirza style tokens deck. Um, but I think Triumph of the Horde is a little bit better. 20, 20 damage in one turn is harder than 10 infect in one turn in my opinion. But it is good. The, the triple green though really kills it for me. If it was double green and three colorless, I could definitely run that over this. But this one only has a double green requirement, and you're already running, was it 9, 13, 17 green mana producer, producing lands in the deck. I think Triumph of the Hordes is a bit more consistent. Uh, and there, that's my uh, little tack in the deck for now. Uh, the deck is pretty bread and butter except for this card. Um, and we're definitely going to see how well this card does uh, with Infect being such a... Uh, a real annoyance in the format, in my opinion. Uh, and there's really nothing you can do. I mean, with uh, <clears throat> there's certain decks that gain you a lot of life. Infect will kill you if you're at infinite life. And uh, that's one of the things that I really like about Infect. Um, so with that being said, I mean, in Kroon's Outlaw by itself, it's a 3-3, three, three, puts in 6 damage by itself. I mean, plus Instigator Gang, it's a good game. Um, so Triumph of the Hordes is a great card. 10 Infect is easy to get with the stack, um, and I think you guys should all try it out. Um, that's my little tech right now. I, have, I, don't, I don't think I've seen a Werewolf deck run it uh, lately. I don't think I've ever seen a Werewolf deck run it. I got this idea when I was just browsing through cards on Troll and Toad um, a couple months ago before I ordered all the Werewolf stuff, uh, and I've had them sitting in a deck box for the longest time. So two Triumph of the Hordes. Maybe three eventually, but right now just two. It's just our finisher card. <coughs> and... Uh, Onto the lands, running four Copper Line Gorge, four Rootbound Crag, nine Mountain or nine Forest, and six Mountains. Alrighty, sorry about that. The uh, someone was at my door, but for the lands, real quick, just to go over them, running four Copper Line Gorge, four Rootbound Crag, uh, nine Forest, and six Mountains. Now we're only running twenty-three lands, which is a bit low. Um, in my testing, at least, I haven't really encountered a problem with running this low of a land count. Um, but I, w I don't feel totally comfortable running 23, um, which is why I need you guys' help. If you guys see anything in this uh, version that you think should be dropped or should be added to make that 24th land, um, go ahead and let me know in a comment. Um, I think everything is pretty solid. Uh, but I, I would rather, I'd feel more comfortable running 24 lands as opposed to 23. Um, but like I said in my testing, I've played like eight or nine matches with the deck, with this deck at least, and it hasn't really been a problem. Uh, there was one, one game where I had to mulligan because of the bad land hand, but with 23 lands, I, I definitely feel more comfortable running 24. <coughs> so, uh, with this current deck, if you guys see anything that you would take out one card just to add an extra mountain, uh, let me know. Um, but as you can see, I'm not running Kessig Wolf Run once again to make the deck more consistent, uh, and things like that. Sorry about that. But here's the uh, deck. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I'd like all of you guys, if you can, to test this version. And let me know what you think about it. And uh, that way we can kind of get closer to a more ironed out deck list as opposed to uh, 10 or so of you guys uh, each trying out a different deck list. Uh, it'd be better if we could find a deck list that is good and then work from there. Um, let me know if you guys think this is a good deck list. Uh, and uh, once again, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate all you guys watching. Are you guys subscribing? Uh, it really helps, really makes it worth it. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe. Peace.